waiting on the evangelist to let me know if we were live, mm -hmm. and she just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. We're grateful. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I heard my daughter just sitting there, in spite of all that may be transpiring in all of our lives, the Lord is still good. He's brought us to the last Sunday in this month, 24 days in this month. He's given us January, February, March, and now we're in April. So we had 31 days in January. We had 28 days in February. Then we had 30 days, right? Yes. Hmm? Y'all yeah. talk to him. Amen. Amen. So when we look at it, 89 days, and this is what, the 24th day. And although this day has not contributed completely to an end, 1201 midnight has not come as of yet. Amen. Yet there are 24 days today. So mm -hmm. 113 days thus far in this year. And for those of us that still have breath in our body, those of us that the blood is still, as the old folk where I'm from and where many of us are from, still running warm, or as some say coursing through our veins, God is still good. Is that right? Right. Yes. And you know the old saying, God is good and all the time, God is good. We've had those tags and then they wore themselves out and they came back and then when you had social media, everybody started putting it and then you had shirts that said it and everybody everywhere just started saying, you know, God is good and all the time God is good, right? Everybody yeah. just got excited every time that it was said. Now that it has worn down, now that it's wore out, you know, and then when they find themselves in positions where it does not look like to them that God is moving fast enough for them, right? right? Don't look like God is moving at all. And they don't realize that God is moving because what's the purpose of saying and reading the text where the Bible tells us that all, and we know mm -hmm. that all things work for good mm -hmm. for them that love the Lord. Okay, you say you love the Lord, right? Right. You say you are called according to his purpose, then his purpose, everything worked good. You know, Amen. Wednesday night in Bible class, I know some folk, you know, might have detested the Bible class because one of our uh, members that is still growing in the Lord, and, you know, he said a couple of words, two words to be exact, and it was, you know, uh, in between certain things that he's still growing. He's still fighting some of the things that the Lord wanted him to do, and he's still dealing with some life issues, but yet y'all don't know how far this young man have come. Right, right. And in the midst of it, you don't know what has taken place to get him to the place where he is. And, you know, it's the thing that you got to learn to move forward. Mm -hmm. And still move on. Oh, Lord, he said some words. He said some bad words. Well, first of all, while Peter was warming himself by the fire, mm -hmm. while Jesus was going through his preliminary healing, hearings, and, you know, he wound up going to Caiaphas and wound up going back to Amos and then back to Caiaphas. And before he finally had his trial and they, you know, saw him and they asked him, one of the women and then another woman. And then some of the men outside asked him, didn't we see you? And yeah, ain't you one of Jesus' followers? And finally he got to the place. He started cussing. Am I right about it? Then if you really knew Paul himself, Paul in his actual second letter that was written, Paul said some words that were harsh to the believers at Corinth. What you see here in 2 Corinthians that's recorded in the Bible is actually Paul's third letter to the believers at Corinth. And if you read his second letter, you know, really defending his apostolic call, his apostleship, Paul said, y'all know when I'm in person, he said, I'm much more harsh in what I has to say. Mm -hmm. uh, rather, he said what I have to say. So I use the word has to say. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got to understand you still grow. And in your growth, your language don't change overnight. You don't just stop cursing all of a sudden if you was a cuss. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all talk to me. 
If you just start cussing all of a sudden because you done got saved because you done found the Lord, you done came to the Lord Jesus right on time. Right. I found him, I found him, I found him right on time. No, baby, you don't just stop doing you, 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 you had a problem because you were very promiscuous in, you know, your mannerism and in your behavior. Yeah, you try to control yourself, but it don't just happen overnight. Amen. You are a wanderer and you love, you know, laying up with whatever you can find and you do your best to control it, but you have not gotten to the place. You have not found, you know, the niche in the glitch to be able to keep you from, you know, just finding that little piece on the side. Y'all talk to me now. Yeah. And then even after you do it, your appetites and your hunger still try to overtake you. Y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. See, what you try to make it seem like is that what you desire and what you want, you got it so under wraps and so under control that Satan try to make you look like a plum fool, even in your relationships. Come on. Am I right about it? Amen. You know what you like, you know how you like it, you know what you desire, you know what your type, you know what your kind is, and you try to act like you ain't looking, you try to act like it ain't caught your attention, and it does. Y'all talk to me now. Uh -huh. You try to act like you don't like the red berries, you try to act like you don't like, you know, uh, the, the carrot cakes, and you don't, you don't like, you know, the, the upside down pineapple cakes and all of it. Y'all talk to me, I'm going to use some things, you know, because that's how y'all act with women and men. Y'all talk to me now. You walking. Huh? You act like you don't like the crown roll and the irk and jerk. Yes. The easy Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Seagram Seven. Mm -hmm. Huh? Come on. You act like you don't like the Reggie no more. You act like you don't like, you know, all the stuff you got in there when you are around. You act like you don't want to be a busybody. You don't want to be a tattletale. You act like you don't want to be around the good gossip. Don't get quiet on me this morning. You're welcome. And I know it's afternoon, but I know, you know, some of y'all are still morning and, you know, on, on, on Central Time and on, you know, Mountain and on Pacific Time for those that, you know, tend to join in with us. Mm -hmm. Right about it? Mm -hmm. right. Y'all still busy bodies. Y'all still mind other folk business. Y'all still like good gossip. Y'all might not be talking about it, but y'all like to walk by it. Y'all like to keep, you know, peddling around it. Y'all like to turn a, a close ear to it. Y'all like to hang around it. You know, you know, y'all how y'all walk back and forth. Yes. You don't talk with the people, but you get around the people that you can just say, and then you try to change how you say the stuff, but you really gossiping when you're around other folk. Yes. Then you catch yourself, Lord have mercy, I'm gossiping. Y'all talk to me. Y'all go get yes. quiet. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Huh? You saved and sanctified, but you still got some of the rudiments. Mm -hmm. I know it's rudiments, but I'm going to say rudiments. You still got some of the roots of your old ways. You still can't stand for them. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Y'all still got that bitterness in y'all. Don't let somebody do something that you can't stand and you don't like. And we all like that. I don't care how sanctified and holy. I don't care how often you fast. I don't care how often you go before the Lord. I don't care how much you got power and how anointed you are. I don't care how much healing you do. And I don't care how many tongues you speak. I don't care how many demons you say you cast out. Let somebody do something to you that you cannot stand. Let them try to play you like a fool. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. yes. Let them act like they phony. They, they want to be your friend. They want to be close. And then all of a sudden, they start showing their true colors. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Yes, Lord. Huh? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Why am I saying that? Because in these 113 days, you really look at it because, see, Ramadan ain't over for some of, you know, uh, those folk that are Islamic, Muslims. Right. And for a lot of the Catholic folk, they still have not hit the end of, you know, what have been considered uh, as they have been going through their season, right? Amen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Jesus got up as we celebrated the resurrection on last Sunday, right? Yes. But after he got up, he tabernacled how many more days? Okay. No, it wasn't 50. He tabernacled 40 because 10 days after that, what came? He came, he came right back up to heaven. He sent it back to the cross. That's right, because
because for 40 days he still made sure that his disciples were ready. And those that were his followers, they had everything that they needed, right? They were well equipped. They were not ill-equipped, but we got some ill-equipped leaders, don't we? Yes. We got some ill-equipped believers, don't we? Yes. We got some weak folk, don't we? Yes. Go ahead. Well, I thought you had something you wanted to say. Because it's open right now. You know, this is our moment where, you know, where we get that. You know, Evangelist told me yesterday, I asked him what we were going to say this morning. And I, I know we had some things that took place. But that still ain't, a, ain't no reason not to still give God some praise. See, you got to learn how to praise God in spite of it all. I'm going to tell you all where my mind was at. And this is what I've been looking at for quite some time. Because my mind was at a place that I was getting ready to tell you all this morning. I'm going to take us about it. My wife ain't saying nothing. She quieted her when I go, she said, mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Don't, don't put your head down now. I don't need y'all picking fingernails and playing on no phones or nothing. They need y'all looking. I want y'all to understand why. Because see, when the horse been plowing, when the mule been, been pulling, when the donkey had been plowing the field and everybody just been sitting back and enjoying it and everybody think that they got jobs and the other mule ain't got nothing but one job. Y'all talk to me. I need y'all to catch this this morning. Mm -hmm. Just like the church say that, that we're pretty for us. I need y'all to catch it. I need y'all to catch it. It burn you out. Y'all got jobs and y'all be getting burned out on the job. But see, if you had that job and still had to come and plow in the field of the Lord, would you be able to handle it? Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Well, huh? Right. What if you had to deal with a job where you got over 1,200 folk that you working with, ministering to, and still had to go deal with another 300 folk right. as you lead them in the Lord? Yeah. Huh? Right. I guess my preparing around when I worked in the school system myself. And they wanted me to go in the classroom, and I said, nah, I'm good like this here, because I still got to deal with them folk and counsel them as well, and deal with the teachers and deal with all of y'all. So I'd rather go on and just clean up the mess, because I worked as a janitor. Mm -hmm. So I had all kind of mess to clean up. I not only cut grass, and I not only swept and mopped floors and took trash and stuff out, but I also had to deal with the mindsets that had trash in it too. Y'all talk to me. I need you to get it. That's <laughs> understandable. We talk about how hard it is for us on jobs when you got all of these different types of dispositions. Right. Mentalities. Characters. Yes, Lord. Got all of these state of beings. Mm -hmm. You have known that God called you, but you tired. Y'all talk to me. Right. Can you still plow in the field? Can you still break up the fallow ground? See, y'all done got quiet over there. Y'all done shifted gears. Y'all done downshifted on me. Y'all done went back on me. Y'all done. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That's how y'all call silent now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In these 113 days, we all need to look at what's all going on and where the war, even in the Ukraine, you know, where Russia uh, looked at the fact that because they thought that they were losing or they wanted to give the impression that they were losing against Ukraine. They really wanted the Ukraine to think that they were gaining ground when they were really had an ultimate purpose. Do y'all know the ultimate purpose that folk doing what they're doing in, their, in your lives? Right. Do you realize the ultimate purpose that the enemy is doing what he's doing? Do you realize while you still hanging on and hinging to some of the rudiments that you still carry before you became, you know, into the relationships that you have? And let me, let me spell out because y'all hear me say relationships all the time. And folk always think the first thing they're talking about in relationships, you're dating somebody, you're married to somebody, you're engaged to somebody. But your relationships sometimes with your co-workers, the friends that you say you have, or your associates, those close associates, those next associates. Is there, those right. real close associates. Y'all talk to me now. Right. And then those folk that you just deal with. Mm -hmm. See, you got folk that you have in three different circles. You got the outer circle. You got the inner circle. Then you got the innermost circle. Then you got the most inner circle. Some of y'all got some folk that are still part of y'all most in a circle that you ain't dealt with in somewhere, sometimes 20, 30 years, Amen. 10, 15 years that still got access and control of you and they ain't nowhere around. Right. Mm -hmm. 
but you still letting them wreak havoc in your life and you now got an ongoing relationship for the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years with somebody new, but you don't understand why. You still got the issues going on. You still live in a past relationship. Because your mannerism and behavior, your thought process and your character, you still allowing your behaviorism still to be as it was with somebody else. And they have moved on by themselves. And they still have the spiritual control, principalities, spiritual wickedness, rulers. Y'all talk to me. Uh -huh. and you wrestling with things of old while you think it's things of new. Mm -hmm. What have happened now, they've sent some spirits back in the areas where you at to mandate how you gonna act now. And those principalities now are controlled by how your heart is. Y'all all right, come on. I need y'all talk to me today. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to prepare those that were getting ready to now go from the bishopship or the bishopric now into the apostolic or into the fullness of what was getting ready to take place. Because they were getting ready to operate in the fullness of who he was as his ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Operating on his behalf as though he was still on the earth while he now was seated back at the right hand of his father. Right. Am I right about it? You are. Okay. As my grandmother knew would say, eh? This is our teaching time. Y'all talk to me. Y'all just talk a moment ago. So for 113 days, what have you figured out about yourself? And what have you released yourself from that you still have given way to that God have put there for you to recognize is still beating you? Mm -hmm. Let me go here. And then we're going to move on. I hear you, Holy Ghost. And if you don't believe me, you can try the spirit. Those of you that are present and those of you that are watching. Now somebody gonna get mad at what I'm gonna say. Why are you still beating the ass? Hmm? Y'all forgot Balaam. Balaam was supposed to bless Israel. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Book of Numbers? Yeah. Yeah. He got up early when the Spirit of the Lord had told him not to wake up early. But he got up early. And he was riding a she ass, wasn't he? Yes, he did. And while riding a she ass, the direction that God told him to go, he didn't go. Angel was standing in the road with a flaming sword. And she asked, sat down. And three times she asked, sat down, and he was beating the ass. And last time that he whipped the ass with his rod, the ass spoke. Yep. And she asked him, why you keep hitting me? You mean to tell me you can't see the angel in the road? Oh, he was the prophet of the Lord, but he wanted to profit. And for all you prophets out there, you're wondering why all you have is what you have and you're not going anywhere. And the people that you have only have what they have gotten because of what you said. The reason why you're beating the ass. Mm -hmm. God got the angel in the road. And sometimes you got the ailments that you have and you're losing and they're still coming back for the same prophetic word. Y'all talk to me. Right. And the reason why you can't see no further than what you saw and from all of the fasting and all of the stuff you call yourself getting away from and all you apostles out there that feel your apostolic anointing is greater than somebody else's, I'm sorry to tell you, it can't be greater than nobody else's. Then that means uh, somewhere in there, either you're dealing with something that's demonic or the Holy Ghost only know you only and I'm sorry, don't work like that. Because according to what the word of God says, it's the self-same spirit. Uh, spirit, hmm? spirit. So you mean to tell me I ain't got the Holy Ghost and you got it and your Holy Ghost is greater than mine? You may have a little bit more maturity than me, but then you mean to tell me you're operating out of self and it ain't operating out of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. You can't see the angel in the road. My Lord. Mm. I'm trying to help us today. And I'm talking about all of us. I'm starting with me on down. Our relationships are the way that they are. There's sometimes God is trying to get our marriages to be where it is so that it get back in the order that it should be. But we're beating the wrong ass. 
And where we should lose some things, we won't lose it. We're holding on to the wrong things. Because we've allowed folk to get in our ears. Because right. we got too many lovers like Solomon. Mm -hmm. We want to please everybody. And we are building temples to the wrong people. And who we ought to be building the temple with, we are not. We are building them with the wrong men and the wrong women. Right. Uh-oh. Y'all will catch that tomorrow. Y'all should have caught that right off. Mm. Uh oh. Mm? Mm -hmm. In 113 days, he done revealed a whole lot of stuff to us. And you mean to tell me you still fighting your brothers and sisters? And we are many members, but we're one body, and we're members one of another. Mm -hmm. And we still trying to be divided among our own selves. Amen. Easter Sunday is the most divided Sunday because it's about things that should not be. Right. We go out, we search for eggs, Bunny, first of all, ain't died for none of y'all. <laughs> it's commercialized just like every other holiday that we look at. Yes. And when we try to tell folk the truth about it, folk get mad about it. Mm -hmm. I told you, I love it. I love the candy. I can eat eggs any day of the week that I want. If I want an egg. Right. I can boil the egg and I can color it whatever color I want, but it ain't about that. And y'all not looking at the purpose behind the coloring of the eggs either. Right. The decoration of the eggs that they decorated and why they decorated and the purpose of it is about fertility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Right. When we begin to learn, we begin to move away from the things of why we do it. Right. But we don't want to hurt our children's heart. Mm -hmm. Huh? Right. right. When we understand why they celebrated the Passover, and now Jesus at the Passover kept the word that he had given unto Israel, and in the process of it, he established the new covenant. And why? He came because in the old covenant that he had first established, he said, here's what's going to take place, but when I come, my new, this is the new covenant I'm going to give. Throughout the old, he had already said what new covenant he was going to give. He said he was going to take out the stony heart and give them a new heart. Yeah. He said, here's the new covenant that I will make with them. Throughout the prophetic words that he had gave to the prophet. Sixteen prophetic writing, or writers, rather. Seventeen prophetic books. But it's only sixteen prophetic writers. Yeah, y'all do know that, right? Yeah, the yeah. first two were seniors. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You had 16 prophetic writers. You had the first two that were seers, but I said writers. Mm -hmm. right. Listen to what I'm saying, prophet. You write on that, but I said writers. But you have 17 prophetic books, but out of those 17 prophetic books, only 16 were writers. Because one of those books was an extension to one of those 16 writers. Mm -hmm. There you go. Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And in what was written, it was written to get us to see the things that were soon to come to pass. Right. And all of those things are almost fulfilled. But we so caught up in everything else because we got to have luscious. Mm -hmm. We got to have the cuts. Did we all travel down those roads at one time? Yeah, because we were so stuck in everything else and some of us moved from certain things and certain churches and certain religions because other races started doing the same thing and you didn't want to no longer be like them because you didn't think it should be like that and y'all separated yourself because of races and because now they had money and they were out dressing other I need y'all to catch it today. Right. We can't move forward because we keep dividing ourselves. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all do understand how things went, right? Just like in school now here in Florida, 
when it comes down to mathematical books and how things are going, there are certain things that are written in it, but you're trying to remove history and how it really was. Right. And how it really came about and who it was that first established certain things. Mm -hmm. Then you won't put it where it actually go. And who it was that actually did it because you don't want everybody to know who it was that gave it its first foundational principle. Because right. then if you do that, that alters history completely and put it where it really should be at. And what you got people believing as what history is, now you got to go back and shift everything because what was the head, you made it the tail. Right. What was on top, you put it on the bottom. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What you said was no good was actually good from the beginning. What you said was worthless was actually what made you worth. What you said had no worth, had all the worth, and you took it. Y'all talk to me. Don't nobody get upset because we don't want the truth to come out. Because when the truth come out, now all your lies, you got to figure out how you're going to cover it up. Is that not so even in our houses with our children? I need y'all to catch it because this ain't a race thing. This is just a truth thing. Yes. Because that's what happened even when Jesus had died. And when he got up, when he got up, they said, make sure that you tell him that uh, his own disciples stole his body. Y'all remember that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm leading up to what we're going to be at in our text today. Because I'm almost through service, almost over. The teaching is to get us to recognize that 113 days, what have you really done? Mm -hmm. let, let me say, what, what, as Janet Jackson got to be real popular, and as she began to sing her dance songs, and as she began to come out of the light of her brother and all of her brothers, and she was in the light of her big brother Michael, she sung the song, you know, what have you done for me lately? When you think about what has taken place lately that helped you to grow from where you was at in the last hour? When you went to your worship service, those of you that have already went to your churches, before you get into in the worship, did you recognize that God had to let you in? When you went to your friend house, when you went to your mama house, whether you had a key or not, hmm? right. Right. sometimes your parents had to change the locks because sometimes you came in when they didn't want you to come in, didn't they? Mm -hmm. The whole key about it, your parents would tell you to give a call even though you got a key to let them know you were coming over. <laughs> or you had to announce yourself once you walked through the door. Am I right about it? Right. Because you had to make it known that you were in the house. Mm -hmm. and even if you didn't have a key, you had to wait to be what? That's right. And being let in was a signification of being what? Welcome. And being welcome was another signification of being what? There you go. You got to be invited in. In worship, God have to invite you into his presence. But to be invited into his presence, you got to praise him. Praise is the preparatory state. Say that again, preacher. In his course of praise and thanksgiving. And in order to do that, you got to be prepared. You got to make preparation. You got to move some things out of the way. You got to get your mental state together. You got to get some junk out of the way. Hmm? Yeah. If you don't remove some stuff out of the way, there's no way God going to let you in his presence because you're still selfish. Mm. you still full of animosity and hatred. you still got some variance. Yes. you still got murderous thoughts on your mind. Mm -hmm. right? right? Right. You ain't like the way somebody approached you, the way somebody said certain things to you, the way they handled you, the way they came at you, the manner in which they said what they said and how it made you feel. You can't move on. You ain't ready to go into the house of the Lord. That's why Solomon said, be careful how you carry your foot into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, at that time, it was actually talking about the temple. Do you not know you are? That's right. Paul said, know you not that you're the temple of God, and if you be the temple of God, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. So, you know what? We got to be careful sometimes, huh? Yes. That's why that boy, uh, Robert Kelly, right? Y'all call him R. Kelly, huh? Yeah, yeah. And although he in jail, the boy said, be careful what you say to me. 
be careful what you do to me because it might just happen to you, right? Right. Hmm? Right. And although everything he did might have not been right, but everything wasn't wrong, he had enough sense to recognize, right? Yeah. Y'all talk to me. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. Everybody knocked what he did. Everybody want to put it on blast. And everybody want to put it in the front, right? Yeah, without sin, you cast the first stone. So tell me something today. Y'all pick up y'all rock. And if you can go a rock and it don't hit you first, then y'all tell me. Mm -hmm. That ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. If you can cast a stone mm -hmm. and not throw it at yourself mm -hmm. and it don't hit you first because you ain't done no sin, then I like to see it. Because whether you have physically done something, I guarantee you have done it in your mind first. Right? Right. So here's where I was going with another part of that when I started. Irregardless of what had taken place in your life, you should always be at a place that you can find a way to begin to give God some praise. Even if you got to fight your way through praising God. There have been so many people in bad relationships or in relationships that felt bad or felt like things just wouldn't, you know, the way they wanted to be. They found their favorite song and they started saying it, right? Mm -hmm. They sung their way out, right? Or they played their song until they started feeling how they wanted to feel, right? Right. right. Hmm? Right. Oh, yeah. So you mean to tell me why you're going through, you can't give God some kind of praise? I do. Mm -hmm. You can't just tell the Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. One thing my dad and I, we used to do all the time, and he would get excited by the time he finished Getting everybody said, I'm not throwing a pep rally. Right? Reverend do it often and say, say, just tell him I'll thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. He said, if you ain't getting excited, I get excited. Because I caught hell on me. Hmm? Right. And if you don't want to tell him thank you, I'll tell him thank you. <laughs> thank you. He said, you got to tell him like you mean it. You got to be real about it. Wasn't good riding down the highway. He used to ride two and a half hours. Sometimes two hours and 45 minutes, depending on the traffic coming from Slide all the way down to Gibson to Beulah Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. and he would do that sometimes two or three times a week, depending on what was going on at the church. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. Going back, if you look at that, that sometimes was five hours. Round trip. Hmm? Right. And if they had revival, and he wouldn't stand. He was going back and forth if they had revival all week. That's five days. Right. At five hours round trip. Him and his wife and his daughter. And they had three people that come faithfully from Slidell down there when they got off from work. Y'all talk to me now. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's dedication. Mm -hmm. That's love. And if his revivalist didn't show up, he would preach the revival himself. Mm -hmm. Are you really that dedicated to the Lord? My Lord. <laughs> huh? So when we look at all of these things in these last 113 days, what are you committed to? Are you really committed more to what you're doing? To why you say you're committed to things that you should be more committed to? Are you submitted to other things more than you're submitted to the things that are really most important? Mm -hmm. I need all of us to get this because I don't want nobody to take this out of context because of what you got going on, and even in my own family. I need y'all to understand this ain't going, this ain't directed at nobody. This is for all of us because when we really evaluate what's really going on, what's really most important, because then it would begin to now pull things out of the way that's causing the most problems. And really begin to set a better standard. We can't see and teach somebody else something. And they begin to live it. And our life is still ragged. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you ain't saved. Let me make that clear. Because they ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. Hmm? Right. Remember in the beginning of our relationship. Evangelist and I. She said, see, like every time you look up, you challenge my, you challenge my salvation. I'm like, what you talking about? What I'm saying is this. And what I'm pointing out is that. If you think that's challenging your salvation, you might go check your own salvation. That sounds like you ain't got your own salvation together. 
But from what I can tell, I believe it's together what they're saying. That might be some things you need to fix. Because if you feel that challenge your salvation, and we will go back and forth, go back and forth, say, no, baby, that's not what I'm doing. I'll never do that because I don't believe that there's nothing wrong with your salvation. What I'm saying here is what we can do to better our walk together. Am I making any sense to anybody? Right. Yeah. This is, oh, okay. Because I really thought you were challenging my salvation. Trying to say I ain't saved. No, I ain't trying to say you ain't saved. If I'm going to say I'm going to just tell you to your faith, I don't think you're saved. I'm going to tell you to your faith. We're going to be straight up with you. Ain't going to pull no punch. And she found out, yeah, I do believe you to say that because you just straightforward like that. Mm -hmm. You just cut through that, they, but, as they tell me. Am I right about it? Right. Why am I saying that? It's 113 days. It is imperative because we have to be at a place where we gain not just ground, but strength. Mm -hmm. Not just spiritually, but in all areas. Holistically, we got to get that. Amen. Will we get weak along the way in areas? Yes, we will. And why I'm saying that Matthew chapter 26 is where our text word is at. I told you, we're getting ready to get out the way. My daughter said, what you mean? Y'all ain't catch that part because she said that when I said this leading up to the message, I'm about to get out of your way. Why am I saying that? Because it don't take long when the Spirit of the Lord is present. I told y'all, I come prepared. I come ready. I come ready to do what God said to do. Because when you look at what Jesus did, he got up. He tabernacled. When he got up and the ground shook, the graves bust over. Y'all do, do realize that after he got up, before he got up out the grave, that the graves broke open. Mm -hmm. And some four to five hundred, you know, saints began to walk down the streets of Jerusalem. And they were seen. And y'all do know that's what the text say, right? Mm -hmm. yes. That ain't something that was mythological. That wasn't something that was made up. It was real because they talked about it for centuries. They saw folk that had died in the Lord walking down the streets of Jerusalem. And then Jesus got up out the grave. Mm -hmm. Come on. Y'all talk to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Told y'all I'm ready. I, I, I can hear it in my voice. I already hear the Lord shifting because they get ready to move. Because, see, when you look at these 113 days and it was on my mind, that's why I told y'all I was thinking about it. I wanted to tell my wife first. I'm like, okay, now, nah, now. Nah. Then we got ready to get started. And no more, I saw my wife sat out at the back. Then my wife moved up, you know, uh, a little bit. I'm like, okay, well, maybe she can warm up. Then she still just sat there. And I'm waiting. And then I, I, I pressed the thing for her to start. And she still get I'm like, okay. So here it is again. We got to plow the field. Mule getting tired. Legs getting weary. Who gonna hold the field up? Who gonna, who gonna put the yoke on their shoulder? Y'all gotta, gotta catch it because mm -hmm. that would be funny. Like, okay, you know, old mule gonna be sitting in the, in the stall. Legs gonna be laid down and be holding my head to the side. Like, okay. Y'all yeah, know how the horses and the mule do it when they're tired? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Well, y'all, I'm telling y'all, I feel pretty good right now because I know he, he already up in here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Matthew chapter 26. We go, the, 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 the whole text is what you're going to look at, verse 36 through 46, but I'm going to break it down where I want you to be at, where my primary verse is going to be at in just a second, but I want you to catch it because in 113 days, hmm, it's the year 2022. It's been 22 years in this new millennium. 22 years. You mean to tell me those of us that have been in these 22 years? My daughter was born in 2007, is that right? Mm -hmm. She done lived 13 of these 22 years. 14, rather. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to be 15. You mean to tell me out of these 15 years, my son have lived 24 of those. My biological daughter, 24 of those 22 years. Y'all talk to me, am I right about it? Mm -hmm. My biological daughter born in 1998, my biological son, my biological uh, son born in 1997, and my son that my uh, wife had born in 1998, am I right about it? Yes. Y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. What's so funny, daughter? You get old, baby, if you remember her age, born in 2007, she get ready to make 15. Got a son born in 2006, he getting ready to make 16. Mm. Mm? Mm. 
And I'm the one that had multiple strokes. I'm the one that got white matter that's damaged real bad in my brain. One that got some problem remembering stuff. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And usually the parents are the ones that forget it. Well, it's the mama that usually forget the children's <laughs> age. Hmm. Where am I going with that? I'm saying that because we have a whole lot that has transpired. You got young folk that done died in this year already. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Just last night, young police officer had to save a mother and their child. Climbed up on the outside of the apartment complex without a ladder before the fire department got there here in Florida. Just the county is so old, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had to take off his vest and take off his uh, camera and everything, and he just scaled up the uh, apartment. Right. Was able to get to the mother and the child and save them from a burning fire. Mm -hmm. That child and his mother, life was spared. Amen. The reason why I'm going there because in that they could have not made it to day 113. Right. Huh? Right. We got so many disobedient children that the Bible says that they ought to honor their father and their mother. Yes, Lord. That the day may be long on the land in which they live. Now there are some other things that go along with that, and here it is, Jesus, you know, over 2,000 plus years ago died that they might live. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. And when we look at the fact that he got up that we might live, he got up that we might have eternal life, he got up that we might be able uh, to live with him forever. Yeah. Among other things, and that, you know, uh, we might not have to worry about the sufferings of hell. Mm -hmm. Eternal separation. Right. And in this particular text here, you know, you got to look at the mere fact that all the things that had preceded him before he got to this. Mm -hmm. Sat down at the supper, getting to look at uh, how he had to get ready to die, and he shared in eating uh, the bitter herbs and eating the uh, roasted uh, lamb. Right. And all of these things were because of the suffering that Israel had to deal with when they came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And all of us have been out of our Egypt for quite some time, but we find ourselves going back because of our mental states. Yes. Because of some of the decisions and choices that we make. Mm -hmm. Because we allow certain things to draw back in because of our hungers and our desires. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of certain weight from the sin that always seem to cause us to stumble. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because we know the things that we like, the things that we enjoyed, how we enjoyed it. And we allow certain spirits to draw us back in because of the lack of discipline or rediscipline. Yes. Well, y'all to talk to me today. Come on. Yes. Because what I want to talk to you about, if you didn't see it when you logged on, what's in your cup? Mm -hmm. Because what's in your cup, you know, going to determine uh, whether or not you can handle the suffering that going to come your way. Y'all do remember uh, James and John and how their mother had asked Jesus for one to sit on the right hand and on the left hand. Y'all yeah. well, remember that, right? Yeah. The sad part is Jesus had asked them, can they drink from the same cup? Mm -hmm. Can they die of the same death? Can they be baptized with the same baptism? Right. And he said, well, you know what? Uh, surely uh, they will be able uh, to go through the same baptism. Mm -hmm. And surely uh, they will be able to uh, endure the same death and they will be able to drink of uh, this cup. Mm -hmm. But to sit on the right hand and the left hand, uh, that's already reserved. Right. See, some of y'all want to have positions that ain't yours. Come on. Some of y'all want to be able to sit in places that then uh, set for somebody else. You want to sit on somebody right and somebody left, but it's all ready for somebody else. And some of y'all are sitting in the wrong seats. Yes. Because you done drunk of a cup that never was meant for you to drink of. My Lord. You need to check your cup. Mm -hmm. Look at the text here. And not only why they were doing that and why he was uh, going through what it was, he drunk the cup of blessing and... Uh, <laughs> He drunk a cup of dedication and uh, he drunk of the three cups, pride, 
the last cup, which be the cup of completion that he said he wouldn't drink it with him until he drunk it new with him in the kingdom. And after he had celebrated uh, what the Passover was all about and the fact that uh, the deaf angel had already passed over, they were able to sit down instead of standing up because there was no need to rush. But he took bread and he broke it. And he let them know what suffering was getting ready uh, to take place and how they were uh, whipping all night long. Mm -hmm. oh. You got to think about what happened in this 26th chapter before it got to where it talks about the cup that we're getting ready to deal with because some of y'all had to endure some lashes. Do, do y'all understand how broken some of you are? You, you know, uh, in our relationships, we are verbally, mentally, uh, psychologically, physically, uh, socially, economically, financially. Oh, y'all are catching it right here. Because some of us have dealt with this for a long time. And some of us may not be going through it now. But because the stain is still there and you have not been healed, you're still uh, dealing with the stripes. Oh, y'all are catching it now. Yes. You know, uh, the months... Because every now and then, my daughter, she tell me, Daddy, the month coming up where I had to endure certain things. Yes. Oh, y'all to catch me now. <laughs> yes. Y'all gonna pray with me? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm tired and, you know, uh, the month where I, I had to endure and, and the pain that uh, I went through and how I suffered. I, I just can't deal with it. And, and I dread. Uh, the month that's coming up. Oh, y'all yes. talk to me now. Yes. See, there ain't no pain I'm trying to give up, but I want you to understand some of y'all still remember uh, the month, the day, the hour, and when you really look at it, uh, you can still visualize. Oh, y'all talk to yes. me. <clears throat> but that's what I love about it when he told them what uh, the bread would represent his Broken body. Mm -hmm. And that's why he broke the bread and he gave it unto him. And he said, Take eat because he knew that along the way, because when we were partakers of it, we were partaking in the suffering when you know folk were lying on us. They would understand why we preach the way we preach, why we are so charismatic, <clears throat> why we love them the way we love them. In spite of how they handle us. Yes. Well, y'all don't understand, do you? Y'all should catch me right there because, see, some folk don't understand how you can still deal with them after they've been dogmatic. Hmm? Amen. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how some folk are? Yes. How they have been uh, verbal in what they do? Yes, Lord. How they have been vicious in what they have uh, come at you with? Mm hmm. Hmm? They tried uh, to make sure they destroyed everything that was supposed to be ill. <clears throat> Y'all talk to me. Y'all got quiet on me now. So he said, uh, this is my body, which is broken for you. Mm -hmm. Then he said, likewise, he said, this uh, is the blood that I shed for the remission of sins. Some of us have committed more sins than others. It is said that uh, Will Chamberlain uh, slept with more women than anybody have ever slept with. Mm. About 20,000 women than any other man had ever slept with. Y'all talk to me now. Mm -hmm. Huh? He <laughs> said that he slept with 200 women one time at one time in one night. Oh, y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. I believe that he had old Solomon beat. <laughs> but I wouldn't put it past Solomon still having a week because it says Solomon had 300 wives and uh, 700 concubines. Right. But that was only uh, putting it lightly and giving it a number because, you know, Solomon had women wherever he went. Uh -huh. And it said that the ways of Solomon uh, had never been known. <laughs> oh, y'all to talk to me now. And the reason why I'm saying that because he said this is the blood of the New Testament uh -huh. that is shed. And what he said, the New Testament, this is a new covenant that I make with you. He said this one here has now been nullified because under the old one uh, there was no remitting of sins. Because you had to continue to kill rams, sheep. 
turtle doves, and lambs. And if the lamb was not without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, it did no good. You still had to have an escape door. And if you didn't have the kind of money to get the right kind of uh, 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 sacrifice, you had to go in the woods and you had to know what kind uh, of sacrifice to hunt down and bring back to the priest. Oh, y'all gonna pray with me? Yes. Because when you look at your cup, and I'm glad that when he looked in the cup, and I'm trying to hurry up and get to the text because it says, then come Jesus under the place <laughs> called Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. and, and see, it's, it's, it, the reason why it's called Gethsemane because in one other text it's called uh, Mount of Olives. Uh, because it's called Gethsemane for the simple reason it's called crushed off mm -hmm. or crushed olives. Because see, you got to get to the place that God is trying to get all the oil out of you. You don't like to be crushed sometimes, do you? You don't like to hear when people begin to tell you of yourself. When God begins to reveal who you really are, what it is you're really doing, what it is you're really thinking. When he perceives your real thoughts, when he begins to tell you what you are still doing, how you are still acting, what your behavior still is like, how your character is still flawed where you can really fix yourself, how you are still carrying on, how your behavior has not changed, how you have now fixated yourself in believing you have now changed, transformed, transmogrified, and now uh, came to a new metamorphosis and still came out exactly like you was when you went in. Oh, y'all, talk to me now. Don't, don't get quiet on me now. And when he began to show you the mirror image of what you was before you went in and uh, your metamorphosis didn't do anything and you came out exactly like you was, the same size, same shape, and same disposition, and your mentality was still the same, and your thought process had never changed, and everything about your blood was still coursing the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Your choices were still exactly the same, and nothing was under control, and your behavior, and you were still drawn to the exact same things, and you still acted the same way. You still had the same desires. You tried to disguise what it was you were doing, and he showed you what was going on, and it was still causing the same issues everywhere you went. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all, talk to me today. So he says, the word Gethsemane, when you look it up, it means crushed off. God is trying to get all of all out. The best of all of the all and the purest of all of the all that they actually use uh, for anointing is when they have crushed all of the islands all the way down. Mm -hmm. There's nothing left, not even skin. No. Y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. We always want to get pure birds and all, right? Mm hmm? Yes. We want to get extra virgin and all. They have to crush it all the way down. Mm -hmm. God gonna get some water out to one way or the other, but is the water really washing away everything that needs to be washed away? And has he crushed everything that's in you in order to be able to now get the all that's on the inside? You don't want to be crushed. So when he came to the place called Gethsemane, he said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray young. We can't sit with our wife, we can't sit with our husband, we can't sit with our children, we can't sit with our mother, we can't sit with our father, we can't sit with our son, we can't sit with our daughter, we can't even sit with our family while we uh, take the time to pray. In other words, to watch, make sure that nothing that's going to disturb, get in the way, catch and block phone call, make sure that nothing that's going to uh, cause them not to be able to get into the place that's needed to seek after the Lord for what's needed for the house. Well. Can't pray with the family. Can't pray with the ministry. Can't pray with the church. Can't seek after God. Because mm -hmm. we're easily distracted. Y'all talk to me now. Yes. Can't stay focused on the matter that's at hand to make sure that all of the things that need to be removed, healed, delivered, and strengthened because we can't sit down there and wait on it. Somebody we know get ready to come 
Bust us upside the head, we'll let them come because we mad at the wife. We mad at the husband. We mad at daddy. We mad at mama. We mad at stepmama. We mad at stepdaddy. We mad at grandma. We mad at grandpa. They ain't give me this. They ain't give me that. We mad at pastor. We mad at bishop. We mad at sister so and so. We mad at the musician. Didn't let me say my song. Didn't let me make that run on the drums. Come on, y'all. Come on. Mm -hmm. Well, he says, sit here while I go down and he took with him Peter, and the two sons of David, he took James and John. These were the three of the inner circle. Who are the three most closest folk to you? And sometimes you got to watch them. You got to remember just a few uh, texts earlier. They were at the same place. and They watched Jesus be transfigured. They saw him in all of his glory. Mm -hmm. They wanted to build a temple under Jesus and under Moses. Y'all talk to me now. They watched and saw who he really was. You got to be careful when you reveal the people who you really are. Because they forget to worship God. They forget to worship Christ. They forget to bless the Holy Ghost. And they start worshiping you. Amen. Bishops, apostles, pastors, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, leaders, missionaries. Y'all better stop letting these folk worship y'all. Churches, you better stop, y'all. Huh? Yes. Can I help y'all with the song? Say, girl, you better stop dogging me around. <laughs> That's what the church doing. Yes. Dogging God around the call. They worshiping them. He said, Paul said in uh, Romans chapter one, they're worshiping the creature more than the creator. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said they began to be sorrowful and very heavy. He got sorrowful. He knew we were getting ready to come. You know how you need somebody to be just there with you because how bad and how serious, how important, how intense the matter is that you got to seek out the God face. Huh? Or they can see when you get ready to go to work and you just had a blowout. You just had a very vicious argument, a very intense situation with your spouse, you know, with your significant other, with your child. Or you just had a blowout with your boss or a co-worker. Everybody can see that and everybody want to be around you. I'm around about it. Instead of being around you for comfort, they want to get all in your business. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me now. Yes. Some folk is written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. Y'all know how some folk is. They know what you done been through. They know you're going through something. They know you done had some situation, not situation, situations. All right. And they're ready now to play on that mess. Instead of pray, P R A D P R E. They're ready to cause you more hell than a little bit. Instead of you going before God, instead of you sending a message or calling back and said, you know what? Hold up, don't argue. Just pray, baby. Mm -hmm. Honey, darling, sweetheart, I know you don't want to hear my voice right now, but right now, all I need you to do is go before the Lord with me. We ain't got to do it on the phone in your time and my time. Let's pray. You don't ever do that, do you? Have you ever attempted to do that? To now shake the frames of what the devil done done and what he's doing? No, y'all stay right where y'all at. And instead of now taking the intent of the situation and turning the intent around to now empower. Oh, y'all to pray with me. Can I help y'all? Help the Holy Ghost. They, they ain't got to listen to this. That's all right. He said, then said, he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. Look, look at here. I need y'all to understand. Here's my human side. His humanity said, look, I, I really don't want to do this here. I, I know they're getting ready to do some other stuff. They're getting ready to make it real bad. And, and I know I was sick for this cause was I born. To this end came I into this world. Look, look at here. I got to die for y'all. I know what the rest of the world going to do. They're going to start laying up with one another. Yes. They were already playing in themselves with animals. Well, y'all have talked to me. They were already sacrificing my little children to fire. Yes. They were already cutting their throats. Throwing them to the death, y'all. Talk to me now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that, do you? Yes, I need y'all to catch it today. I need y'all to get it. Hmm? Mm -hmm. 
They were having every argument they can think of. Hmm. Yes. They already now trying to figure out how they can recreate what I created. Mm -hmm. They trying to figure out where I'm at. Right. You think they just got space stations just to have space stations? <laughs> oh, y'all, I hear your Holy Ghost. No, no. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even under death. Satan was trying to get him to get out of here before he got out of here. Y'all know how some folk, mama's in between the grave as well as on this side. The old folks say she got one foot on a banana peel and one foot in the grave. <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. When a woman is getting ready to give birth, She's between life and death. Yes. And sometimes the mother lives and the baby dies. Mm -hmm. Or the baby lives and the mama dies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the baby has some issues as it's living. Y'all talk to me now. Yes. Come on, y'all. Yes. Mm -hmm. You wonder why it's hard when a mother gives natural birth. Why the baby is coming through the birth canal. Oh, I need y'all to get it now. You wonder why they're suffering for a mother. Mm -hmm. Not just because. Because he already know that God had placed inside that child, mm -hmm. especially in the male child. Blessed is the male that bring forth the mother's womb. Yes. He already know that that male child, God has already placed in that male child. What is needed now is set it on him. Oh, y'all can get it now. Oh, I feel pretty good now. I feel better than I did because he understands that this male now carries the God sent anointing now to set the world in all and set hell on fire. Oh. What's in your cup? If he can call death to come before, he can even begin to live. He already knows it's all good. Y'all well. know that he had already set the stage just like he did in Egypt killing all of the first bond man. And that's why even with Moses, even after Jesus was born, he was trying to take Jesus' life. Oh, y'all to get it now. Mm -hmm. mm. Here it is before it's time for him to get to Calvary. He was still trying again to take his life, trying to get him to take his own life. Y'all to check the text. Y'all to look at it. And he still told him, Tyree, you here. Watch with me. <laughs> They were there with their swords because he didn't want nobody to ease up on them. You got your boys with you. You got your girls with you. You got them folk that you know you can trust to watch your back. Who you got watching your back? My Lord. They're supposed to make sure nobody ease up on you. Here it is. You watching your own back because they done got tired. Mm -hmm. We done been up all night. We've been fussing, we've been arguing, we've been debating, we've been talking about this here. And you mean to tell me you still got strength and want to pray? I'm tired. I'm sleeping. I got a headache. I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to get some kind of rest. Well, if we pray together, God will refresh your body. Mm -hmm. Ask me, I know all about it. Mm. Get ready to go home now because I got just a few more words to tell you here because as he went a little bit further and fell on his face and prayed, Look at the gospel. Lucas said, while he went a little further, and while he was praying, he said, as he prayed so hard, the sweat looked like drops of blood that fell off. Check the text. Right. He saw the bitter cup. Sometimes life got bitterness to it. Sometimes the suffering that you go through is going to be bitter. Sometimes people will cause things to become bitter when it's supposed to be sweet. Hmm? Sometimes even friendships will come bitter. Yes. You choose to make the decision to do one thing when God is trying to get away to you. You should be in the house of the Lord worshiping God, but you choose to go and play around. Yes, God didn't open doors and he didn't fix it to where you can now get the thing that you really wanted, but you can't get the thing and keep it because you chose something else over God. He done put it to where you ain't going to lose your son, lose your daughter. You ain't going to lose your house. He done put it to where you got the job because you lost another job. But instead of you in the house of the Lord giving God praise, you done chose to go somewhere else and do something natural instead of giving God his time. Yes. Oh, y'all to talk to me. Yes. What's in your cup? You done made the decision, baby. So look at what Jesus said. He said here, 
He said, he went a little further. He said, oh, my father, if it be possible. And I'm going to stop at that part right there. He said, if it be possible. Some of y'all want God to move stuff out of the way. Everything ain't for God to move. You got to go through. Yes. Everything ain't for God to take out of the way. You got to deal with it. Everything ain't for you to understand why God has allowed it to be because it is his will. He said, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Well, first of all, everything ain't for it to be possible for it to pass because you got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You said God gave you the woman. You said God <laughs> gave you the man. That's what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden. That woman you gave. Hmm? Eve said the second. Couldn't say to man, she had enough sense not to say, you gave me that man. You brought him to me. You presented him to me. She had more sense than that. Uh-oh. Bet you no preacher ever told y'all that one, did he? Mm -hmm. She had more sense than the bird had humming. Mm -hmm. More sense than the bee had buzzing. More sense than the cow had said, mm. Y'all talk to me now. More sense than the woodpecker. <clears throat> Why that? Because she knew who it was she conversated with. Because in your cup, you got some folk that you conversating with. Some folk that you done said some stuff with, and when you've been acting about it, you lied and said you ain't say nothing at all. Who are you lying to, baby? Mm -hmm. What was it that you said? Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Don't get quiet on me now. The doors of the church are open. Because what's in your cup, he said, if it be possible. Right. He already knew his father wasn't going to move the cup. You already know. You want out the marriage. Uh -oh. Have you tried to reconcile for real? No, not that little play stuff you're doing. Uh -oh. Have you really tried to reconcile, not play around reconciliation, not go around and do the thing that you think going to be all right? Uh -huh. You really tried to reconcile. You really went through reconciliation. You really tried to make a resolve. Not the resolve that you wanted, but you knew it really lined up and fit the word. And you really worked the solution that was put in place. And because the solution really wasn't working, you didn't play the solution. You whacked the solution. Uh oh. Just say out if you don't want to say amen. Yeah. If you don't want to say out and amen, and you don't want to nod your head, just shout in your head. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. He said, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But here's the key to the whole thing. You got to understand. And if you're going to say it, you better make sure you know what your mouth's saying. Because if you know that you get ready to say, nevertheless, not my will, thy will. Be careful when you say your will, Lord. Be careful when you say your will. He said, nevertheless. Not as I will, but as thy will. Because if you're going to say as thy will, Lord, then I'm going to tell you now. Be ready. And when you do that and you go back and look for them folk that are supposed to be with you, you're going to find them asleep. Wake up. Shake them. Wife, husband, son, daughter, sister, brother, choir member, church member. Huh? Wake them up. Come on, y'all. Amen. You mean to tell me you couldn't watch? Which means you couldn't pay attention. You couldn't pray with me. I ain't say, no, I ain't talking about that. I need you to be say, okay, Lord, I, I need you to give them strength. Strengthen them, Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Walk with them, Jesus. Hold them up, Lord. Lord, they get ready to go through. They done already suffered enough, Lord. The enemy is attacking them on every hand, Lord. Y'all want to say the enemy is afflicted on every hand, throwing their rocks and hiding their hand. If you dig one ditch, you better dig two. You always holler about the trap you set that's made me for you. But it's coming up again. Hmm? If you're going to do all of that and you're going to say, as thou will, then you understand now, I got to get back in your word. How am I going to make it through? You done already made it. Because he said, your faith will sustain you. It's the substance. Because it's the hope <clears throat> and the evidence. Because it's going to prove of those things that's not seen. Did, did, did y'all catch that? Right. I told you, the doors of the church are open. Because you've got to check your cup. 
What's in your cup? What's in your cup keeping you from really falling back to the place you need to fall? In? Or falling for the stuff that you keep falling for? Falling for the people you keep falling for? Keep allowing the people to do the things that they've been doing in your life all this time. You keep allowing the same things to bring you down the same path. You keep traveling the same path. Keep choosing the same cycle. But you say it is the will of the Lord. Are you sure it's the will of the Lord and not your will? You said, nevertheless, not as I will. Okay, if it's not as you will, and God's showing you what his will is and which direction to go to travel in his will, then follow it. If you're not going to follow it, get out the way. I need y'all to catch it today. If you're not going to get it, you're going to mess up everybody that's with you. You're going to damage them because you've already damaged and hurt yourself. And you're going to keep them from getting what God has for them. Because you'll never see what God has for you. Because you're blind. And that's why everybody keeps falling in the ditch. Jesus still said, come unto me all ye that labor in the heaven laden, I give you rest. What's in your cup? Do you really know what's in your cup? You drinking of this cup. And yeah, the cup sometimes is bitter. You're going to have to deal with folk telling you all, cussing you out. You chose the job because you needed it. You understood it because they prepared you for it. You chose the area that you live in. Now you done found out what's in the area. Did you search it? Did you take the time to survey it? Hmm? You accepted the call. With the call come some things. Did you take the time to seek the Lord? Did you listen at the leaders and the teachers God gave you? Did you submit not only to God but to the leader that God gave you? Are you willing to follow them? If you ain't willing to follow them, then find when you're going to follow them. Because all you're going to do is mess up where you're at. You ain't going to mess you up. You're going to mess up where you're at. Because you're going to destroy it. Because all you're going to do is sit. You ought to talk to him. He's still saying. He said, you can get out of what you're in. If he said, come under me because you're laboring and heavy laden. You got a whole lot of stuff on you, and he trying to take it off you. You don't want it off you. You've been carrying all this stuff long before you got where you at. Long before you got to the people that you with. Long before you got to the wife, to the husband. Long before you got what we call blended families. Long before you got the stepmom, the stepdad, the stepbrother, the stepsister. Long before you got, long before you got a new job, long before you moved to Tisha Mango, long before you moved to Capital, long before you moved to New York, long before you moved to Maine, Connecticut, long before you moved to California, Wyoming, wherever state you in, long before you moved that God had already prepared the ground for you. Now your job when you got there was to ask God to lead you. Now he lead you and he led you where you got to go. Now, what are you going to do while you're there? He already showed you what was in your cup. He saw a world full of sinners, liars. Homos, whores. He saw a world full of transgenders. He saw a world full of transvestites. He saw a world full of homosexuals, but he loved them. He saw a world full of cheaters. He saw a world full of adulterers. He saw a world full of fornicators. He saw a world full of drunkards. He saw a world full of drug addicts of all sorts, molesters. He saw a world full of traffickers. He saw a world full of folk that knew that they were going to do stuff that could get them in trouble. He saw a world full of crooked judges, crooked cops, crooked lawyers. Am I making any sense? You think he didn't see that? He saw a world full of black, white, Asian, Pacific Islanders of all colors that were going to hate each other just because of the color of their skin. So a world full of folk that because you was on the wrong level, didn't have the kind of money that they had, didn't dress like they dressed. He saw that in the cup. He saw that at the beginning when he said, let us make man. When he died before the foundation of the world, when the lamb was slain, he saw, do y'all not understand? He saw that. So when the cup was there and he said, nevertheless, he saw all of that. 
And he mean to tell me I done told y'all all of this, y'all my disciples. Here y'all the only three that is just as strong as I'm going to be. And I'm going to leave this in y'all hand as the primary leaders. Y'all going to be the ones to make sure these other uh, leaders are at where they need to be at and strong enough to be able to lead the rest to begin to carry this in there. You mean y'all sleep? They will sleep on the job. Well. How many of y'all sleep on the job right now with your eyes wide open? So he said, come. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. Shall so minister to you not because you ought to know what's in your cup. He knew you were going to fall off. He knew you were going to mess around. That's why he said, you have heard it said of old, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I tell you of the truth now, that when a man look on a woman, See, women, y'all think he wouldn't talk to y'all. But you look on a man just like a man look on a woman. He said, you've already done it. Y'all talk to me. Hmm? And some of y'all lying on the Holy Ghost. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Y'all lying and saying that the Holy Ghost told y'all to say something. The Holy Ghost ain't gave y'all no utterance in nothing. Y'all talk to me. We still playing games. He said, take my yoke upon you. We're learning, but we don't have no power. That's what Paul said when he came back and he broke down with that men, right? Mm -hmm. He said, they're ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. And they're powerless. They're powerless because they're not making an application of the word. They got knowledge of it, but they're not applying the word in the right way and in the proper manner to their lives. He said, my yoke is easy. Y'all making folk do stuff that the word ain't telling them to do. Mm -hmm. He said, my burdens are light. Y'all adding burdens to people life. In other words, y'all adding stuff to them, making them carry stuff that they should not be carrying. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Hmm? You got quiet on me, man. Is that not true? You done seen it, right? You done came up on it, right? Yes. Everybody won't go back to Saturday. Everybody won't go back to Friday. But ain't nobody really living it like they should. Mm -hmm. Then you won't send everybody to hell. Right? Yeah. But then you won't holler about with love and kindness have I drawn me. Really? Quack. He said, my yoke, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he said, listen, the spirit said come. Whatever condition you're in, whatever shape you're in, Whatever lifestyle you had, if the Spirit of the Lord is still able to draw you and, and you can hear it and, and it's pulling you to him, you might want to come before you get to the place and you hear him and by the time you get ready to receive it, you can't because he'll turn you over to a reprobated mind. But if it's still drawing you and you in what you in, whatever state, y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if you transvestite, transgender, homosexual, alcoholic, gay man, gay woman, whatever you are. I don't care if you're the cheating man and you got a wife, the cheating woman, and you got a husband, you the fornicate, you the, you shack it up, whatever. If the Spirit of the Lord is drawing you, he said the Spirit said come. The bride said come. Whosoever will. Look at what he said. Whosoever will. You were the murderer. He said come. Uh-oh. See, y'all got a problem with that, don't y'all? I understand our laws prohibit certain things, right? right? You molested somebody. He said, come. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, y'all got jacked up. Come on, somebody. Right. He didn't leave nobody out. First Peter, he says in the word, he said he would have none to perish, but all come to repentance. Right. Uh-oh. Some of y'all don't want to forgive them, but some of y'all go badly make it in. Mm -hmm. He said, if. The righteous shall badly make it. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So some of y'all go badly make it to heaven because y'all don't want to forgive these folk that have murdered your family, molested your family member, molested you, that done you something wrong, stole stuff from you. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. We get ready to go now. I told you the doors are open. It's up to you to accept it. Yeah, that's it's hard though, preacher. It's hard, Reverend. It's hard, it's hard, pastor. It's hard, bishop. It's hard, pastor. Yeah, yeah. In your mind it is. But it wasn't hard for him when he went to Calvary. Because he saw all of that in the cup. He already knew what he had to die for. And they were getting ready to whip him for you. And he knew some of y'all were going to go back. He knew some of us was going to still think like that. 
He knew some man, some woman, some boy, some girl was going to sleep with her stepbrother, sleep with her stepsister. He knew all of it. You, you really, my daughter, like, ooh, mm -hmm. am I lying? Mm -hmm. He knew some stepmother was going to sleep with her stepson. Right. Paul dealt with it down in Corinth, and the church at Corinth knew what was going on. He knew some stepfather was going to sleep with his stepdaughter. Y'all talk to me. Y'all right. really don't think Jesus didn't know that? If he know your thoughts are far off, he knew some stepdaughter was going to come switch it through. Yeah. <laughs> My man home. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come out like that. Oh, did I do that? Mm -hmm. Am I lying, Kendra? You're right. Hi, Evangelist. You're right. He knew some stepbrother David had to deal with it in his house, right? right. He had incest in his house. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me. Come on, Jesus. He knew he had to die for that. He knew some stepdaughter or some step son was going to get their mama drunk. Y'all talk to me. No. Did it on purpose. Act like they wasn't doing it on purpose. She was going to act like that what she wanted when all the while she did. He was going to act like that what he wanted. Some auntie or some uncle was going to mess with their step, you know, grandson and all this other stuff. Y'all talk to me. This is the world we've been living in for quite some time, and y'all so saved and sanctified, knew that some pastor was going to do that. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Can I call the truth as it is? Yes. It hurt. Yeah, the church to do that, baby. The church been doing that. Amen. And it ain't got no color on it, neither. It ain't got no religion on it, neither. Definitely not. He died for all of that. It's amazing that Jesus died for some stuff that we don't even think about doing. Right. Then we got a problem with it when he forgives it. Mm -hmm. And you got some folk that done went through some stuff and he done delivered them. You got some folk that got delivered from some stuff and don't want nobody to know what he done delivered them from. But he said, forsaking not the assembling of yourself together as others have done in often time. One of the reasons why he didn't want to do it, he didn't want you to forsake it so that if you going through or got the thoughts that's going to draw you into that, because he know for centuries these things have been passed down in your DNA, is to help somebody so they don't go through it. Amen. Uh oh. And if they do, they got the strength of another brother or sister. But here's the thing that also helped us stop. He said the older men are supposed to be fathers indeed. The older women are supposed to be mothers indeed in the church. The younger men are supposed to act as brothers indeed, and the younger sisters are supposed to be acting like sisters, but we don't do that because our church now has become the dating ground. Yeah. Sure, it's the social place. It's ours to offer to you. I'm trying to tell you how it's supposed to go, how it's supposed to be. But our society say different because the morality has changed in the immorality. And immorality has changed the morality. Mm -hmm. So what's in your cup? Like Samuel Jackson said for Capital One, what's in your wallet, what's in your cup? So it's ours to offer. It's yours to accept or reject. Jesus died for all of that, and yet for 40 days, until he took a flight back to heaven mm -hmm. on a cloud in the east. And the angel asked the disciples, he asked them, ye men of Galilee, why are ye stand here gazing up? The same way you saw him leave is the same way you're going to see him come back. So I ask you today, if you said nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will, then keep going. It's going to get tough every now and then. But he promised you that his grace was sufficient. And it still is sufficient. And his strength is made perfect if you find yourself weak. How? Because by your faith, according to your faith, be it unto you according to your faith, God will give you just what you need. He promised to supply your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not just financially, y'all, but in every area and every aspect of your life, you just got to keep trusting him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Don't lean to what you think you understand. <clears throat> and in all thy ways, you got to acknowledge. I'm talking about everything. Okay, if you're going to the bathroom and you got a number two or number one, you're going to take a bath. You got to acknowledge him in everything. 
You go into the kitchen to make you some food. You walking out the bedroom. You walking out the living room. Acknowledge him. Let the Lord know, Lord, I thank you. Lord, be with me. Be with me, Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. In my night and oh, oh, You got to acknowledge him in everything. And he promised that he'll be with you. God will never leave you, nor forsake you. Just when you think he wasn't there, he'll be there all the time. God bless you. God keep you. As I was to offer, it's yours to genuinely. It's up to you. You got to accept it or reject it. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You can take it or you can leave it. It's up to you today. What's in your cup? It's on you, Evangelist. Amen. 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 We bless the Lord. We thank the Lord for the word, for the institute on this morning. We thank God for Apostle for carrying us through our morning worship experience. The title of the message was What's in your cup. The pastor gave us a lot of <coughs> examples. He gave us a lot of things to look at. Many of the things that none of us really want to look at, see, or deal with. But yet, and still, we still got to face it, look at it, and get it right. So we bless the Lord. We thank the Lord. I pray that every, all hearts and minds are clear. Um, the cash app has been put up for those that would like to tithe or see or give an offering. Please write it in the memo section so that we will know exactly what it is for. This week, Apostle, we'll be doing our um, fire fuel Wednesday night Bible study. We ask that you join us and be a part of Bible study with us um, as we continue to move in, grow in. And being all that God has called us to be. A little tired this morning, voice a little hoarse. But yet it's still God is still blessing us. He's still keeping us. Mm -hmm. And he's still leading and guiding us. So at this time, we will have prayer. And Apostle will give us our benediction. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. We say thank you for your word. Thank you for the deliverance of the word that came out on today. Lord, as we examine our hearts and our minds and we see where we're at and where we're standing at, and we're looking down to see what has been placed in the cup that we're carrying and that we are drinking out of so that we can empty out these vessels and be pleasing in your sight, oh God. We ask you that you continue to move on every home and every situation and everyone's life. You know what everyone is standing in the need of. Every prayer request. So now, Father, we ask you that you grant it in the name of Jesus. We ask you that as we get ready to depart from this place and never your presence, that you continue to walk with us. Let us be the light for some boy, some girl, some man, some woman that will lead them to you, that they will see only you in us, oh God. We ask you that you continue to make ways out of no ways. We ask you that you continue to be the supplier of our needs, oh God. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Apostle. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord, the communion, the presence of his Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. And all of God's children said it. Amen. Amen.